Well, hello there. Happy Friday and welcome back to the Trading Desk. My name is Joshua Thanos. This guy... Jason Main. That's Jason Main right there. We're and back. we are back together On again. On a Friday. Boom. All right, cool, guys. So thank you for, uh, for joining us. Today we have an action-packed show. We're going to be talking about all sorts of crazy things, things we've never spoken about before. That's true. Like new watches. content. Yeah, watches. Not true at we all. might get to that, you know. Cool, uh, we got some new content. We got tons of photos queued up for tonight for you guys. Do we? Yep. Cool. Um, we uh, we clipped some art. And, uh, yeah, we're going to start with traditional. We'll go right into uh, wrist shots. How oh, about good. that? I want to talk about some watches for a second. Jason, what are you wearing on your wrist? I am wearing my 114060 ceramic non-date sub wow does that come with the dirty crystal or uh yeah well it's because i wear my watches so um you see plenty of scratches all over this guy i mean it's not horrible but uh i enjoy it thoroughly it's a great watch and uh oh oh we got oh look at you you brought a weapon into uh, the studio jason why are you pointing your weapon at me uh because that's where it belongs oh god uh that's a john w smith uh custom knife there for you guys who care and if you don't who cares not me don't care what do you, can you cut anything special with that yeah you want to see <laughs> are you threatening me live on camera no. all right well i didn't bring any weapons today um though i did bring panerai so uh if you guys know this panerai this is my uh, panerai 002 hashtag 2a because it's an a serial i'm sure yeah. somebody has used the panerai as a weapon uh, sometime in history. Yeah, maybe. You could certainly beat the hell out of somebody with this kind of big, especially like a 47 millimeter submersible or something. But this one's a 44 millimeter. This is a base model. It's uh, from 1997, 1998. So it's about 20 years old or so. Um, full polished case, about 30 hour power reserve. Um, the watch does not come from Panerai with this dirty looking dial. That is called patina, Jason, or... Uh, water damage. Water damage, that's right. Either or... Irreversible water, water damage. damage. Right, or patina, however you like. Um, this watch is probably my favorite watch. It's my everyday wear, which I probably shouldn't wear as much because um, I'm seeing more and more scratches every day. But I wore this in Las Vegas, which uh, that's where I was spending my last weekend in. And um, you know what? It survived. So did I. So Barely. there you go. I have it on a uh, tang buckle... The new style blue uh, rubber strap and a very versatile watch. For me, it, uh, it works really in every situation. I, um, I have a leather strap that I put this on, a black uh, alligator leather strap, and I'll wear it with a suit. Um, or I'll put it on a rubber strap and I'll go fishing. Or go to a pool in Vegas and, uh, <laughs> and forget where I'm at <laughs> because of alcohol consumption. So uh, great watch all around and probably my favorite right now. All right, Jay, uh, what's next? All kinds of stuff. Maybe some watches. All right, cool. Are we done? Or... Yeah, we're yeah. going to go home now, guys. Sweet. Um, <laughs> all right, so we're going to let's do this or that. Uh, let's do it. Boom. We got a poll. Cool. So this week, Jason, uh, he picked first. So the genre was uh, a dress watch, uh, essentially a non-precious metal dress watch. So he picked Bulgari, very popular brand, great watch. Really, you know which one of the, the most uh, popular and best watches One of the most buy. amazing things is that when I picked the watch, I specifically had Josh's uh, interest in mind. For some reason, he thinks I was worried about what he thought about my pick. But um, yeah. So you, you picked the Bulgari. I, I picked the JLC. So, so, so you go first. Tell yeah, me about so, your watch. Uh, I picked the watch first. There wasn't really a category. Um, I just wanted something that was a little bit off the beaten path. I happen to like the Finissimo quite a bit. Yeah, you're obsessed with um, that. Which we've talked awesome about in the watch. past. This watch weighs nothing. I mean, it's absolutely it, it's amazing. I wore it for an hour uh, just to kind of get an idea. And I, I have to say I do like um, it on the strap, although I would buy the one that's on a bracelet and get the strap because once you throw it on the strap, I mean, it's it's just it disappears. And this particular one I thought was pretty cool when I saw it in the vault. If we can get real close on the dial, you can see the uh, turned movement underneath on the cutout of the dial, and that's actually this is a limited edition um so they forgot to put 50, the loom in there or what? Yeah, this is 50 pieces. And it's a limited edition. And then it, it's a manual as opposed to the uh, micro rotor automatic. It's a manual movement. Hmm. And this has got a power reserve on the back there. And this is a Revolution uh, magazine 50-piece limited edition. So I thought it was pretty cool. And uh, rumor has it that these only went through uh, either half through Revolution and half through uh, boutiques. But... Um, 
watch is great to wear very thin as you guys know the finissimos just sit really really flat kind of has that uh bruce wayne so what's the best thing about that watch jason uh i think the best thing about this watch is that it's understated it's it's pretty pretty damn sleek on the wrist and it's for you exist yeah i mean it's 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 a watch that you buy because you enjoy the watch it's not for other people like if you're gonna go out and buy something as a dress watch that's super flashy and has some kind of like perpetual calendar because you're trying to prove something to people on a moon face and like to know the date a bunch of weird stuff on a dial in this really complex so, layout right. and so jason picked a watch that just barely exists from a brand that just barely exists um and uh, what i picked was a watch that admittedly will be more expensive because what does that run say on a pre-owned we like to compare these pre-owned, pre-owned. that's uh nine ninety five hundred bucks so roughly 10 grand uh this watch will certainly be more than that but it should be because it's a much better watch. So this is the JLC Master Ultra Thin Perpetual. Um, the This is the white dial variant or the silver dial variant, which is fantastic. Admittedly, I'd say the black dial is probably a better seller and might even be my favorite, though I didn't have that in and I just didn't want to show it, throw up a, like a 2D picture. So I grabbed this watch and honestly, I really like it. it the dial is very dynamic. So you have a perpetual calendar moon phase made uh, by JLC in-house movement. This one's automatic too. So you don't have to take it off your wrist and constantly wind it like that very thin, like the paper thin Hashtag two-way watch, watch that's on your like wrist the now? watch that barely that exists. That you own with you your own money? <laughs> that you picked. Ooh, look whose point just fell well, flat. I didn't, I didn't pay 10 grand for my watch. So, so there you go. So you get an in-house perpetual calendar from JLC, um, fantastic movement, uh, Open case back. I believe this watch is a 39 millimeter. Let me just double check. So um, too small. No, it's a perfect size actually for most people. Um, yeah, 39 millimeter uh, deployant. Does yours have a deployant? I uh, wonder why not. That's strange. So this one has uh, JLC deployant. Fantastic deployant actually. Very comfortable. And when it's on the actual wrist, you can't tell. It looks like a tang, which is really nice too. So it's a hidden deployant. Yeah, here you want to get a. Yeah, it's a nice $5,000 deployant buckle. No, it doesn't cost five thousand. Well, the differential between the cost of the two watches. I'm oh yeah, no. So the reason for differential so is because let's get nitpicky. that watch just does time, not even a date, and it's manual wind. This one's a full perpetual calendar. That if you have a winder, you don't ever have to wind it, and uh, it's just you know better manufacturer, uh, better watch all around. It certainly will cost mm-hmm. you a bit more. This is a watch that you can find pre-owned in the mid-teens, uh, but. I mean, where else are you going to find a perpetual calendar dress watch from an in-house you know, in-house yeah, caliber once. for for the mid-teens from a from a popular brand? I mean, come on, come on, Jason, come on, just admit it. I picked one's your dad's watch, and one is your super sleek, cool. My dad, I just cashed Luminox, in, Jason. sold my tech company, and so, I'm balling. I don't know where you grew up, but my father wears Illuminati. You do know where I grew up. We grew up in the same spot. <laughs> my dad. Statement. Not my dad sure. goes fishing and That's wears Illuminati. He doesn't wear. A perpetual calendar, though I'll pro- I would personally. No, he wears this. a ball. He does have a ball watch yeah. as well. Yeah, I gave I gifted it to him. Great watch, dive watch, and that's right. Oh yeah, see, and you thought you were gonna win today. You, oh wait, throw it back up. <laughs> where, where the results go? I'm so excited about. I'm excited about winning, Jason. Okay. Yeah. Let's act like you've been here before. No, let's see the results again. Throw them back up there. I want to see them. Let's act like a big boy. I'm going to wait here until until we see the results. There we go. Yeah, baby. Oh, I'm kicking your butt. It's all right. Oh. So next time when you pick first, I'll find a watch that's $8,000 more than the other watch. And oh, who's winning? Still, though, uh, in, all, in all seriousness, but uh, clearly if, you, you better if watch I that. had to pick one of those to own, there's no way I would pick the JLC. No, you'd like to buy Not the, the single Bulgari. Not a single chance if those two watches, if you said, here, you can have one of those for your collection, would I take the JLC? Yeah, I know, because you like Bulgari. I, I mean, like listen, the watch that I like, unapologetically. Okay. It's it's all right. It's I not the worst watch. I'm not There's pandering certainly, to people. It's, listen, it's not a parallel. That's true. But it's Who almost, owns? It's no, almost a parallel. Nobody wears parallel. Yeah. I mean, it's okay. Here, let's get it. Actually, it looks kind of nice on my wrist. Oh, crap. <laughs> and he's coming to the dark yeah, side. Let's see. Yeah, it's all right. It's fair. It sits super flat. It's lightweight. Yeah, it's like a Bell and Ross, pretty basically. Awesome. You know what? Just get a Bell and Ross instead. Yeah. Bell and Ross there you go. should Perfect. make Spend something three about... three grand on a Bell and Ross. Bell and Ross should try and make something that's about a third of the watches that they... The, in thickness was. Like, they should try and yeah, make a hyper-thin watch. I like Bell and Ross, actually, a lot. Me too. I have a Bell and Ross. You I too. think I'm going to buy another one. Alrighty. But, well, except that I spent probably uh, next year's watch budget in Vegas this weekend, which wasn't probably wasn't smart, but uh, it was a good time, That from what I can remember. All right, so uh, this or that, keep um, 
keep voting uh, for the JLC because it's clearly a better watch, obviously. And uh, yeah, so today, uh, what else? We have some things that you want to talk about, right, Jay? Yeah, we got some cool stuff that came down the pipeline. Um, we heard some. We heard a rumor. Okay. From a pretty reputable source, I would oh, say. Oh, that rumor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so possibly a there was there's a limited edition Rolex that we didn't even know about that you didn't even know about. that was such Nobody a secret such a secret that it's already out right so supposedly um the rumor that we heard from a source that that we believe and uh has pushed some stuff out in the past that came to fruition is that the new white gold pepsi blue dial is uh going to be discontinued well, shortly I mean, well, effectively, the entire the watch itself has been discontinued. Right. But this is the current iteration. So essentially, so the, this if this is the case, this is what a four or five month special edition. Yeah, I mean, so <laughs> we uh, we went ahead and clipped a photo of the black one in case you guys that are watching hey, uh, both, yeah. live under a rock and haven't seen this watch. But um, the black was was great. It was awesome. Very cool watch. The blue came out. I wasn't sure. Uh, from it's the photos, really nice. nobody really knew what it, what it was going to look like in person. We saw them in, in person. The watch is spectacular. Yeah, the blue dial is really the nice. The blue dial blue. in person, it really, really does shine. It works. So uh, this was really surprising to us. We all taken a little bit of back. Yeah. So um, if, yeah, if this is true, then essentially, again, let's repeat, there's a possibility of a four-month special edition or limited run Rolex. Right. So what does that mean in a market like this, Jason? That watch is... I don't know, going to double up. Really? Yeah. Are you paying double? I'm not paying double, but that watch <laughs> is going to double up. Well, he stands behind that one. But, uh, I mean, I don't know. Who knows? I mean, it seems like it makes sense that the watch will be worth more. Um, we'll have to see what people are willing to pay once they realize they can't get the watch in any fashion. But so most, there's only, yeah. you know, whatever. How many do you think they – maybe a couple thousand that they so the, Yeah, the shortest – so, like, the we got, 4,000. I think we got one. Uh, yeah, I think we only received one. So the yeah. Sea Dweller 4000 was two years, two calendar year run, two into two year and two was months, two? something like that. Yeah. And, I mean, that's about the shortest time I've ever seen Rolex run a, run a series is about two years. Right. So if this is true, which the, the time is kind of the only thing that's got me thinking maybe this isn't true, but, like I said, comes from a pretty reputable source. So Maybe, maybe the next ones will have a red dial. I think... Uh, if this is true, then it, it directly caters to pushing the root beer mm -hmm. because now you make gold, you know, you're, you're making gold more of an option. Yeah. You're taking away options. Mm -hmm. So you're pushing sales on the steel one, which is already impossible to get. Um, yeah. But we are That's seeing crazy. those start to come down a little bit. On, oh, and yeah, yeah. They're starting to become available. Oh, well, I don't know if they're so, shipping many, but the watches are coming down in value. It's very clear that the people that are buying them are, are buying them to sell. Them. Only to sell. Yeah. So, like, okay, so I was in Vegas uh to play initially, and also there was a, uh, a dealer show that yeah. I went to, IWGG. So that's a good barometer of what watches are worth because you have guys who will literally pay every last cent just to make a buck selling watches there, right? So you have a whole room full of those guys. So you know that if somebody there is making you an offer, it's usually like the, the, the top of the, the market. market yeah. um, and those watches were – so they're, those watches were available at – you know, sub-20 price points very, very readily available. And it seems right. like they're coming down. So, you know, it doesn't look like... So, originally when this watch came out, I wasn't a huge fan of it. Um, I, I still can't wrap my head around I just don't like the watch specifically. Right. There's a lot of Rolexes I do like. The Steel Pepsi just doesn't do it for me, right? If they release that on a... on a... on a... Um, uh, Oyster, Oyster bracelet, especially since they discontinued the white gold, maybe I'd like it. Right. Um... But I just don't like I don't like the new Jubilee with the uh, with the sport class. But I like if they made it with a hidden class, I'd like it better. Whatever. Um, but I think a lot of people are uh, a lot of people are feeling the same way. Like the watches, they're only buying it now to flip it. Um, so the people who really want it aren't even getting it, or they're paying crazy money for it. Right. So it's coming down. Um, so one yeah. of two things: they're either going to start shipping more. And people that want them are going to be able to get them, or they're going to sit long enough where dealers cut their losses, or the you know, either way. Uh, now is probably the time to to wait if you were on the fence. If we're doing buy sell trade, sell your sell your steel Pepsi. Yeah, it, if if this happens, it'll be a little crazy because when the the steel one came out on the Jubilee, we said, well, of course they would have to do something like that Jubilee because you're not going to just knock the oil, you're not going right. to knock the white gold, white gold off the throne. And then to go ahead and discontinue the white gold, you know, might be a little counterproductive. So, 
Philip uh, McCrate wants uh, the producers to give me a foam hammer to smack Jason with when I win the poll. Okay. And then... Write that down. Thank you. Um, all right. So, all right. So there you go. So the Pepsi, a uh, white gold Pepsi, possibly is uh, has been discontinued. And if that's the case, that means that the blue dial was only released for you know a few months. Right. So uh, I don't know. Maybe buy. If it comes to fruition, it'll probably be a full calendar year. But who, they're not going to be shipping the watches. So you know, yeah. who knows how many are out there? Mm-hmm. But all right. Cool. All right. So we uh, will so see. That's that. Um, the next topic that we have today is uh oh yeah all right so summer's over right yeah. especially up here guys it's f- starting to get cold and in fact for us it's like winter weather it's, it's below winter. 70 degrees yeah. it's a nightmare it's a nightmare um so now uh we're going into fall which means that the holiday season is right around the corner so what do we want to talk about we want to talk about uh, watches. So this is like the biggest buying season for watches yeah. every year. This is when you know most companies make their their nut right. Their the, quota. Yeah, they're they're exactly. Their so Q four is always strong. Um, with the demand being so high right now, um, currently uh, it's only going to get crazier. Right? Yeah, That's what we assume. So so long as the you know, nuclear war doesn't break out, and Donald doesn't screw everything up. As long as we're keep we keep going straight on this course, looks like. Uh, the watch industry is going to be booming, which means higher demand. I don't see brands making more watches, so value should go up. So what watches are going to be hard to get? What watches should you be buying for yourself and as as for gifts, right? That's, yeah. that's kind of what we want to talk about today, right? Yeah, uh, I think really where this stems from is one, on a on a corporate side, two, and uh, also what we're seeing is we're starting to get those first phone calls. You know, I'm thinking about getting somebody a gift yeah you were starting to get those first calls where people were like i need to save up to be able to get the gift i'm starting right. to think about it what should i do so uh that kind of inspired this so we thought we'd take a look at some of the like uh hottest watches of the season um yeah. that makes sense for good gifts so we had a couple picked out um we're gonna queue up some graphics uh both men's and women's we put some women's pieces together too great um you know being that it's going to be for a gift and we do have some uh, we have clientele that are women also but gifts are very popular for women's watches yeah most 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 women's most women's watches are gifts so um for that so uh one of the watches uh obviously that uh we could touch on the ors 65 yeah i think is the starting price point for the gift watches, the gift watches that we cool. were, that we were pulling up. Six five diver, um, that's a great watch. Yeah. Actually, somebody in our office, a woman actually bought one for herself. So that's a great unisex yeah. watch too. So um, I don't know if we we tagged a photo for the sixty five. I don't know if I did. I thought I had it on me, so I was going to show it in yeah. person. Whatever. Listen, but, guys, we uh, know what a sixty five diver is. Yeah. It's not a hard watch so to the, find a picture. The of. watch that you guys saw me uh, wear, I guess. Oh yeah, the green weeks. That's right. Yeah, you two have weekends one. ago, the green dial. Nice. Um, those are going to start right around fifteen hundred bucks, depending on the dial. Um, in the forty two millimeter. Box papers, everything can be readily had at you know twelve fifty to fifteen hundred, depending which one you want. Sure, and yeah, great uh, gift watch, great gift watch, even lot for of bang for the buck. Yeah, and um, anybody will wear that watch. So like, if you're buying, if you got to buy a watch, a gift watch, and you have a budget, and you're buying it for somebody who wears a gold, you know, GMT, you get them a six five dollar. He'll wear that watch. It's respectable. Right. The brand is good. Um, even you know, if it's just a weekend watch, which is you know really what that watch is made for, it's got the vintage appeal to it, which sure. is really nice right now. Yeah, a lot of guys uh, that even let's say guys that spend ten, twenty thousand dollars on watches don't want to spend that kind of money on something that has a vintage appeal because mm-hmm. maybe that's just trendy to them and sure. they don't really they're not sure if they're going to like the vintage look. So you vintage. know it's a, yeah it's a good uh, it's a good piece. Um, speaking of vintage, I think probably one of the the best selling vintage watches that exist for a budget watch is going to be the next one here and this is the uh Longines Legend Diver. Oh, great watch. Do we have a picture of that? Yes. We do. Love this watch, Jason. Me I've too. almost bought this watch probably at least 50 times and then something else comes up and I yeah. just like forget about it. But So, we've talked awesome. about this watch in the past on the show as well. With um, the date, right? I on have yeah. I have liked this watch in, in all of the versions. Um, this one is the one liner, which I think is the you know the the more sought after, the cleaner look. Um, the newer ones have two lines of script, which really I guess if it's a gift, no, who cares? Um, but 
the it's packaging. The, it's the thought that counts. The packaging that comes with this watch. Yeah. When you give it to somebody and the box is oh, it's this huge. Big, it's like an Omega Speedmaster like, box, right? Yeah, exactly. That's what makes the gift. You know, it's sure. like it's spectacular. Well, the retail on that it. is what, like seventeen hundred bucks or something like that? Uh, I think it's twenty two hundred dollars. If I'm not mistaken, hey. they sell for seventeen, eighteen hundred dollars pretty readily. But mm-hmm. the watch is uh, one. It's a great watch. Uh, two. That's also the same thing. It's got a vintage appeal. It's relatively inexpensive. You can wear it uh, on the weekends or wear it all every all the time. Mm-hmm. And it makes a great gift, and there's a lot of uh, history behind it. It's a great starter watch to give to somebody who's maybe graduating uh, school or sure. just getting into watches because mm-hmm. it, it really is an entry like a gateway type of watch. Yeah, it's great because it's a res- again respectable brand. Uh, definitely a great watch itself. It looks great. It feels great. Um, it's very versatile, so you can wear that with this suit. It's similar to how I feel about my Panerai, but actually probably much more versatile than my Panerai because it's a thin watch. You know what? Maybe I want to get one. I Maybe you should. Will. Maybe you should finally get one. I'll finally go buy that. Um, and well, they so they released a teaser about some female, some ladies uh, divers with like almost like Fume dials, almost long like the yeah, long jeans did with like that would be cool. color dials, which they should definitely release yeah. in the men's watches because that would compel me to go buy one immediately. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, that would be cool. I'm looking forward to seeing something like that. So um, moving straight along, mm-hmm. sticking with vintage, okay, uh, as that's kind of the trend of the season, and stepping it up a notch, and we're going to go to the uh, Tudor, the Black Bay 58. So here you can see Ooh. it in the three flavors. This is cool. This is the new uh, scaled down Black Bay. What size is this? Uh, this is a 39 millimeter case, I Perfect. believe it went down to. Yeah. Um, a little bit thinner, a little bit smaller footprint. The, I know the bracelet diameter is a little thinner as well. Um, this is a watch that has shipped already, um, completely sold out. We're waiting for some more for holiday season. But did we already this sell is, the one we got? The first yeah, one? we. I think we got. Uh, I think we got a few handful. Um, very popular. A lot of people asking for this watch. So not only is it a great gift to give to somebody, but mm-hmm. seeing as how this is stepping up to about the $3,800 price point, this might be something you gift yourself. So this, this is actually interesting because I had a customer who earlier in the year um, bought, a, bought himself a gift and one for his son, bought matching watches. Yeah. And we were talking about which ones to get, and he ended up getting Rolex and Mariners because they were available at that point. Nice. Yeah. Um, but this, is, this would be a great – like if you were buying something that like you wanted to wear the same watch as your son – it's a great. It's price points right. You got three different options with the leather strap, the um, the NATO, and the bracelets. You can switch it up. Yeah. Uh, but the, that would be a great idea if you want to buy Honestly, something for someone that you all the have black the same bays watch. are great ideas for mm-hmm. gifts. Yeah. Um, just the fifty eight is the hot watch right now. People are asking for and people sure. are waiting for. So, but all black bays uh, for the price point, I think, are great great options to give away, um, and really, really have like a significant meaning to them. Yeah. Um, the next watch uh, in this category, uh, which I believe we have a photo of just the black one. I couldn't find a group photo. Um, but this is the Omega Seamaster, the new 42 millimeter. Oh, okay. So something interesting. When this was released orig- uh, initially, Jason and I were super high on these yeah. watches. We talked about having, you know, wanting to own one of our one of them ourselves. So now we've each had a chance to try these on, right? Yes. Um, in fact, I got my hands on this watch in Vegas uh, over the weekend and... So why don't you tell everybody your thoughts on this watch first? So uh, I was I was ready to pull the trigger on one of these. I was super excited to see it. I think we all were in the office off of Basel. The first one I got my hands on was the silver dial uh, with the bracelet, mm-hmm. which didn't quite look right to me. Sure. Just didn't do it. And I was looking at it, and there were some things about it that bothered me. And I figured, well, when I see the blue on blue one, that's the one I wanted. Mm-hmm. That's When I see that one, that's what's really going to do it for sure. me. Sure. And I saw the blue and blue one in person uh, last weekend on the bracelet. I put it on my wrist, and it just didn't sit right. It just didn't do it for me. There's something about the, uh, you know, people online are calling it the toothpaste uh, helium release, uh, the toothpaste oh, cap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But There's can... something about that helium release valve that's on there. And, right. You know, um, I don't know. There's something proportionally about the watch. It's gorgeous. You can tell that they spent a lot of time figuring out you know the bracelet's really nice the extension in the buckle is really nice um the watch has some substance to it and i think for a five thousand dollar fifty eight hundred dollar watch mm-hmm. there's a lot of merit there but when you come from like coveting the the old 300 yeah or even the newer ceramic before this generation mm-hmm. uh, it just there's there's a 
there's a gap there for me. Sure. And I probably I'm gonna go ahead and pass on this guy for me. Really? Okay. So yeah. All right. So that's Jason's thoughts on the watch. So when I got it, I got it on my wrist uh, recently, and my main concern was the was the size. They bumped it up to a 42, which, um, so I had a 41, the what the 300. Uh, 300M, yeah. The, 300 m diver, the the one that looks like the reedition, the, um, the reedition that looks like the uh, the Spectre. So I had that watch, and the reason why I had to get rid of that watch is it was too thick on my wrist. It was just too big on the wrist. So I was so worried that they. And one thing I really like about Seamasters is they sit really nice. I was super worried that they were going to just oversize this watch. Right. It's going to wear like so, something else. I don't, I don't have an analogy, but uh, so like a Planet Ocean. Let's yeah, say, exactly. Like there you too go. Thick, yeah. So I thought it was going to wear like a Planet Ocean. So I got it on my wrist, and while it is, you, it's, there's certainly a noticeable size increase, and that helium escape valve is kind of silly. And uh, well, number one, you can take that off. You can wear the watch without that. It just lowers the uh, the water the water resistance. But I'm not deep sea diving, so it goes from like 300 to 100. Yeah, um, that was the initial report. I don't know. I haven't verified that with Mike or talked to any watchmakers about that or heard sure. or re- read anything confirming that from Omega. Mm-hmm. There might be literature inside the watch about that, sure. like inside the box. Mm-hmm. But initially, they said you were going to be able to remove that completely, and it would compromise only 200 meters of the water resistance sure. um, so, at Basel time. So if that's the case, then... I yeah, that would be nice. So um, I tried it on on the bracelet. It was nice. I also tried it on on the strap, and... The watch is absolutely perfect on a strap. Yeah, I it's have not seen it on the unbelievable strap. Unbelievable but... on the strap. So that's one thing. And, like, I, if I was purchasing that watch, it's because I wanted to have another bracelet watch. So now I'm torn because on the strap, the watch wears absolutely perfect. My wife was there. She, I mean, I was at a retailer in Vegas. Okay, I'm an Omega dealer, Jason. Could have got the watch. A pretty decent deal, right? I was ready to give the guy my credit card there yeah. and just say, whatever, dude, just, you was know, it, let's uh, work out a deal here. Was like, it steel on. or two-tone? This one was steel. It was steel blue like, with a blue strap. I feel like the two-tone on rubber would look super cool. Uh, so I saw the two-tone. They did not have the blue on blue. They had the black, all the black with the with the steel bracelet. They had the two-tone with the um, the tantalum, mm-hmm. and then they had the the blue on the on the strap. The blue on the strap was, was the one for me, um, and, but the... The two tone tantalum is really cool. Yeah, it's really really nice. I I think, but for it's me, like crazy for it's value, like twelve grand. Yeah, value wise, uh, the, the tantalum is a weird price point. Um, I think value wise, I'm just gonna I, I might just go ahead and pick up one of the seventeens in yeah. ceramic blue and blue. Yeah. Call it a day. That might be the way to go. But um, so so we both like those watches. That's a good watch for yourself or as a gift. I think um, you know, depending on your price point, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but that that's you can't go wrong with the Seamaster, I believe. It's a good first watch. So if you're buying a watch for a family member, for like a son, nephew, or something like that, it's a great watch to start yeah. with because there's a lot to know about the watch. You can learn about a ton ton about the watch. It's got a lot of depth, and, and it's also very, yeah. very so versatile. F- and from a price point, I mean, up to six grand seemed to be kind of where what made sense. You know, obviously there's guys that can give away Jorns, and there's guys that can give away the moon. I would like but to meet those guys. Most people... Uh, you know, 6,000 is kind of like right around the range, uh, top end. So that's kind of where we capped it at. Sure. Um, so one thing we also we wanted to touch on is, so there's certain watches that, um, so going into the holiday season, a lot of there's going to be a lot of Submariner buyers out there who are not going to be able to get the watch, right? Last two, last year, was that, that was what was happening. This year, for sure, it's going to happen. So, you know, casual watch buyers who are going to be looking for a Rolex Submariner and they can't get their hands on it, right? Or they don't want to pay... You know, over ten grand for it. So, one of the other one of the watches that I think well that I know will be available also will be a good uh, everyday watch, a nice watch to add to your collection. If you want to buy a watch that people know what it is, it's a good watch as well. It's the new Santos, which I've been wanting to talk about this for a couple few weeks. I really, really, really like this watch. This kind of plays into the woman's section of the gift sure. segment because, like you said, we are an Omega authorized dealer. Mm-hmm. So we did pull, uh, there are a few examples of women's watches that we have queued up, and one of them was that 36 Bowman Blue that you sure. see sitting there. That's right. And then Josh saw My the wife Santos. My recent, uh, a recent... Uh, yeah, uh, Josh got his where? wife this exact watch because she really wanted it, um, and yeah. she waited a while for it. Yeah. Um, Couldn't talk her out of it. it I, this watch is great, though. But, uh, yeah, and she loves This is it. a perfect uh, gift watch. Actually, the, so out of all the all the Cartier, it's probably the hardest watch to get. We cannot keep yeah. watches like this in stock. 
The um, only the only thing with that watch um, is I would say you got to try it on first because there's not a tremendous amount of adjustability in the bracelet. That is correct. So just make sure that sized it fits your wrist comfortably. Mm -hmm. But uh, other than that, I mean, it's pretty iconic. It's cool. And then the new Santos, uh, oh, I dude. think men, women, it's I know they have so multiple nice. sizes, but even yeah. a woman, the big size yeah. is super cool. If you want to buy a matching watch for your wife, uh, I don't really recommend doing something like that. But if you're one of those guys that <laughs> has to do something like that, then this is actually a good option. And then um, that has the uh, interchangeability with the strap as so well. Check it on the wrist here. You I can am. take the bracelet off it with the quick release. Dude. Um, Look at that. I mean, it's so cool. Nice. It's, it is, for what it is, you know, it's, it's, it's respectable. Simple. It's simple, time only, date. Uh, you know, it's relatively basic, yeah. but that's oh. kind of what the Cartier. And it comes you know, with an extra strap, like yeah, you just said. Here, standard. Look, watch this. Watch this action right here. Let me get it in there. Bam. Wait. Well, it used to work. No, 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 it works. I'm just, I'm, it's user, user error here. Yeah. And I have stubby fish down. Oh, there's tape on it also, so that's part of this. That's helping. There you go. Bam. So look how easy that was. It's not supposed to come <laughs> off that way, Josh. <laughs> so interchangeable. Um, so, you know, as a Panerai fan, somebody yeah, who cool. likes to change straps, this is great. So you could put a, a, a rubber strap, or no, sorry, a leather strap. They don't have any yeah. rubber for this. Do uh, they? Probably not. Yet. They should. Though I don't know how water resistant this watch is. But again, not very. So if you're looking to add something to your collection and you don't want to overpay for Submariner or a Patek or something like that, this is a good, respectable watch. And uh, I can see the guy that owns like the Santos 100, the XL. Yep. As a, like kind of a sportier look, want to get that for like a suit wear. This is nice. Uh, I, really I wouldn't like own watch. that watch, but Josh is going to, apparently. Yeah, yeah, Josh I likes will, that eventually. watch. Well, you can keep your Bulgari, and I'll get... Oh, uh, hands down, the Bulgari is a better watch than that. Yeah. Okay. Hands down. Well, this watch has a $6,000 retail, Jason, not a twenty or whatever that is. <laughs> yeah, so, all right, yo, so yeah, gifting, gifting for women. So this is the last yeah. little topic of the show, uh, because we don't normally ever talk about ladies' watches, and why would we? Um, but going into the holiday season, um, we're, that's something that comes up. We, we sell probably the most ladies watches yeah. during the holiday season, but everybody comes up with that stuff out of the, you know, coming out of the work, woodwork, trying to buy watches for their, you know, significant others. So, so what do you want to buy for your significant other, Jason? Well, so the, uh, the Nomos <laughs> Club, uh, it was actually, I just almost sold this watch to a guy. That's a nice watch. It's a cool watch. Um, it's relatively simple. It's very unisex. I think a lot of the Nomoses are, are rather unisex. Um, but it's a cool entry-level price point mechanical watch. So if, if your wife or your girlfriend or, or whatnot is enjoying your hobby um, in the automatic watches and is kind of interested and you want to get her one that's not quartz, because a lot, unfortunately, a lot of women's watches are quartz. I don't think that's unfortunate, but go ahead. I do. I mean, I think there's a lot of women that... that like automatic watches and wish that there were higher horology uh entries in a woman's segment but i think this is a good price point um like 22 to 2500 dollars uh figure on a secondary i think retail is right around four um but very pretty watch uh and i, I actually think it is a little bit it's, it's odd that it's unisex but it also has kind of a sport s to it with the red hands um, super long I think lugs the, too it's yeah nice. i think the club's cool um and entry level so the Ballon Blue 36, uh, we have a still image, but we just showed you on camera as well. That stainless steel 36 millimeter Ballon Blue. Mm -hmm. and, um, then and then Rolex, the last one course. was the, uh, it has to be the, the most popular woman's uh, gifted watch, and that's the OP 36 or 39. Yeah. And I think um, if you're not sure, then obviously try them on, but I think the 39 is the better seller. Mm -hmm. And probably the one we recommend, recommend the most is specifically in this grape red dial. Yeah, absolutely. Um, seems to be very, very popular. Yeah, it's a good watch, it and it's a watch. Rolex that you, you can probably get. Stainless steel, relatively, you know, 39, 40-ish in the wrist, and you can actually get one right now, and uh, it's going to hold value relatively well for, for what it is. Yeah, absolutely. So just oh, uh, a buddy of yours, uh, it was it Emad? Or is Ahmad, it, uh, yeah. Ahmad? Ahmad said he bought his son a Speedmaster for his first watch. Yeah. Ahmad Which actually got one of the first... Uh, Tudor GMTs that we got. Really? Yeah, he got. Does he want everybody to know that? I don't know. Well, now everyone knows. You're welcome. 
All right, cool. All right, guys. Um, I think we only got about 30 minutes left in the show, so let's see what else we got to talk about. <laughs> Yeah, it's only uh -huh. Friday. We don't have anywhere to go. So. All right. So, uh, hey guys, everybody, thank you very much for uh, for logging in and you know participating. Let's hear Alex N G, Kyle K, Howdy from Texas, B S, Captain Z, Peter Brimer, uh, Rich Buddy. All you guys, thank you so much for for staying till the end. S K, sweet guy, very nice. And uh, go ahead and follow us on Facebook. Uh, follow us also on Instagram, yeah, so you can subscribe. Uh, subscribe on YouTube. Also, guys, if you want to learn some things, you're in the right place. Not this show specifically, but this channel, because we have something called the classroom, where you have teachers teach you things. And I just happen to be one of those teachers. Is that right? That's right. So next Thursday, my episode of the classroom, I'm telling you, will not be fake news, only true stuff. That will be released, what time? At 6 o'clock. Our producer Harrison says 6 o'clock p.m. Okay, good. 6 p.m. on Thursday, you can watch me talk about things that I I know about, or I think I know about at least. But it's really good, very well produced. Uh, those are actually getting a ton of views, and I think that's that might be the best watch content on the internet. That's where all Print the budget that. went to. What's that? All the budget went to the classroom. Definitely they got come here. Graphics coming in, rolling across the screen. It's very informative. Yeah, exactly. I gotta go sell watches just to pay for like the lights in here. All right, we're All right so go subscribe, home. guys. Subscribe to everything. Uh, catch us on LinkedIn. Uh, get just get us on Grubhub, Friendster, uh, Napster, LimeWire, uh, BearShare. Check us out on BearShare. Um, uh, what else? Is there anything else? We're done here? All right.